Hey everyone, BJ Chorus. This is Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. On today's show, our shout out for a cause is City of Hope, and we're talking about their Self for Hope auction and the team that's making it happen. And on today's show, our guests are Megan Former and Riley Jackson. Ladies, what an exciting day. Let's talk about today this big sell that's going to be a part of the City of Hope. And it's something new. It's an inaugural event. Tell us a little bit about how you all became a part of it and what we should expect. Well, Riley, why don't you go ahead and get started? Because you're the one who put all of this together. Well, so I started a junior board at the Cancer Support Community where, you know, people who are going through cancer or have family members going through cancer will go and get all sorts of services there. So, you know, counseling to yoga classes, art classes, just, you know, to make sure they aren't going through those tough times alone. So one of the hospitals that supports so many of our people at Cancer Support Community is the City of Hope. So what this event is, it supports the City of Hope. Um, and it's a collaboration between the Cancer Support Community Junior Board and Greenlight Women, which is an entertainment group for women. And, you know, we're all coming together to put together the Celebrity Sale for Hope that, you know, will hopefully benefit the City of Hope and, you know, all the research that they do in cancer and diabetes and even COVID. So it's really cool. It sounds like, Riley, there's a lot of hope out there. And there's hope, too, that, Riley, your generation and you are helping educate and also get your peer group and hopefully the generation below you involved in civic duties and making a difference. How did the concept of the event come about to you? We were just trying to think of something original because everybody, you know, in this COVID Zoom world, which is so crazy, everyone's doing these virtual events. And that was, you know, our original idea, but we wanted to do something different, something that would stand out. And this idea came to us of this, you know, sort of garage sale type idea where we get, you know, these cool items from celebrities and we have this cool auction. It's just something new and we haven't really seen it during this virus. so. We're trying to do something cool and original, and I think it's going to work out. Fingers crossed. It's going to be a tradition in the making, and that's pretty exciting. Now, yeah, you got to share, share with us, how did you bring Megan on board? Megan is such a cool inspiration. And, you know, I found her on Instagram. So we needed a young, amazing female to host the event, and we thought of Megan. And it worked out perfectly. You're amazing. Now, Megan. Oh, thank you. Megan, isn't it interesting? Riley's telling you she needed someone young to host. And we're looking at Riley and seeing how great the youth of Riley's generation is. It's almost a reverse play here at this point. I know, I know. That's pretty interesting. So I, my background, I'm a scientist. I'm a biomedical engineer and I work extensively for prevention of for DNA testing for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer predisposition. I started my I started my career as a model and an actress and I was a UN ambassador but at the same time I was advocating for DNA testing for breast and ovarian cancer predisposition. So I started merging these two worlds. And then I uh, recently I started a TV show uh, which focuses on um, making the Gen Z generations utilize their platforms to do good in the world and to shed light on great causes around the world. And um, for me, when I was introduced to Riley, I was so honored to watch someone like Riley, that Gen Z generation, focus on helping others and doing good in the world versus just being, you know, um, um, inundated in their own world and things that are happening, uh, you know, in their own world. And I feel like COVID, if, if nothing good came out of it, one thing came out of it, which is what pe people realize that love comes above money or anything else in this world. And COVID allowed us to create this sale and this auction because people are caring more about sentimental things these days. Most of the pieces that are being auctioned off are pieces that are, they don't, maybe they don't have financial value, but they, they were held by somebody who had a big heart or for years and years shared that heart with the world. And we're basically with 
but with buying that piece, not only uh, only you're, I don't want to say purchasing somebody's heart, but you bringing their emotions into your lives while helping cancer patients. So what can be better than that? Truly, what can be better than that? And giving a shout out for a cause in our day and age is so, so important. And there's not a better place when you think about cancer for all the great works that the Correct. City of Hope helps bring about. And Riley, I just love the fact that you have created this. What's the most exciting part about today? Because here you've got Megan and you also have Eric McCormick helping host. Now, how did Eric come into the loop of the event as well? Well, we, again, we're trying to find someone um, a, a host that will reach across all audiences between you know adults and the younger generation. And you know, ultimately we thought of Eric and we had also some mutual friends and that sort. So it all came together really well. I'm really happy with this product and what's gonna happen. Now, do you wanna hear a fun fact? And you might be able to even talk to Eric about it today. There used to be an event years ago called Divine Design. Have you ever heard about the event? I haven't. So it is similar to the respect that it was a big event of shopping before the holidays and there would be clothes and stores would donate things and personal items would be donated there and it would all go to charity. And Eric happened to be one of the forefront people involved in the initial stages of that event. So this type of concept's not a stranger to Eric. So during the day, he and his castmates were a big part of action and sell of while he was on Will and Grace. So it's exciting that in the stage that we're living in today with COVID, like you pointed out, Megan, you've talked about, that we are being innovative. And what should we look forward to? I mean, you've got some amazing auction items. What's tending your heart strings right now of the items that are up for sale? I mean, I love the Billie Eilish ukulele. Oh yeah, I'm all I'm about, really that about that one what, what about you, Megan? Me, I'm, I'm Taylor Swift. I'm the Taylor Swift um, blockbuster CDs that uh, she uh, had autographed and donated to the auction. I had, uh, there's this bag that, um, it's written by, there was a handwriting note by, from Jack Nicholson in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had the yellow plaid uh, costume from Clueless. Oh my God, that's my absolute had, favorite. We also had Lakers Championship. Yes, Mark. yes, yes, yes. That one was one of my favorites. We have a lot of really interesting pieces. As I said, it, these are pieces that money can't buy. You're bringing the heart and the soul of another human being into your life. Absolutely, ladies. And I think not only the heart and soul into everyone's lives, but also the virtual and the one-to-one -one connections that people are going to be have from some of the celebrity experiences are going to be very rewarding too, because we are in a stage where there's somewhat of a disconnect, but when you can own and appreciate and love and transfer the love from these personal items from the artists and celebrities that have donated a piece of their life and it's going into another home. It's keeping the legacy of them alive and at the Correct. same time, giving the hope that we all need in the projects that you guys are a part of for the City of Hope. So it gives us a very hopeful future in the City of Hope. Now, ladies, where can we learn more about the auction and how can we be a part of it? The one thing that frustrates me and I guess in a good sense is that there are a lot of these items that are buy it now so we may be talking about some of the items and by the time people are able to actually go to the auction site they may be sold but there'll be a lot of auction items that they can all partake with and also Great I'm, point. I'm sure <laughs> Ashley you also have a link where if they just want to donate and give back to City of Hope, they can also do that as well. Website, which is www.saleforhope.com. And there are a lot of options that are buy now, which you can own right now. And there are a lot of other options that you can bid on. Riley, in the sense of next year, hopefully this time of the year, we'll be in a position that you can have an actual location, hopefully a storefront, 
where people can come in and you can have a big reception and have everything out for display where people can bid on for auction and buy other items instantly to celebrate the holidays and keep on giving to the City of Hope. I think this is gonna be a tradition. I'm so excited for you in this respect, Riley, in putting this together and making a difference and giving that true shout out for a cause for the City of Hope. Um, also, on November 28th, you can watch the auction on the Megan Former Show where Riley and I and Savannah Lee May and um, Naya Dennison will be talking about Sell for Hope and some of the greatest items that are going on auction. Awesome, ladies. Let me know if there's anything we can do more, but we do need to remind everyone to go to the website now. Thank you. Let's Thank do a you so quick. I'm so thrilled to be able to to offer an actual silver bullet, a Lone Ranger silver bullet from my father's gun belt. The bullet is, of course, one of the most iconic symbols in American pop culture. Um, they these in particular came. I have a, a small batch that not only were actually in his gun belt but that he had as promotional giveaways to, to children when he would do uh, personal appearances in costume, of course. He was always in costume, never, never to be seen or heard out of costume. Um, it is originally from the 60s. Uh, it is aluminum, and so therefore, you know, it's, it's obviously a prop. You know, it's a little, little toy kind of a prop because children would come up to dad and sneak up behind him and try to, you know, push one of the bullets up out of his belt, right, and, and take it. And Dad would, would kind of feel what was going on, and he'd turn around and give them a little little talking to, and that's not, you, that's not yours, you know, and you should don't ever play near guns and don't touch bullets. And then he would, after he got through admonishing them, he would turn and he would offer, you know, offer the bullet to them. And the bullets, it, what's so cool about it is, that, you know, it says Lone Ranger 45 on the bottom, and from that same batch, um, I donated one to the Smithsonian. And so there is one on permanent display in the American Pop Culture Museum at the Smithsonian. And Don, that's what's so exciting that somebody that's bidding on it, they can have bragging rights that the, the actual bullet's also in the Smithsonian and they have one of very few of that bullet. So that's exciting. And of course, it's all giving back to the City of Hope and people can learn more about the auction by going to sell the number for hope.givesmart.com and be a part of this memorabilia and a part of the legacy of Clayton Moore, the Lone Ranger. So it's exciting that you're sharing that, Don, and, and keeping that legacy alive of your dad to the upcoming generations and future Hollywood. So thank you for your support to the City of Hope. It's an honor for me to be involved. It's an honor for me to have been asked. Happy to, very happy to do what little tiny thing I can do. So, yeah, the City of Hope is extraordinary. Just very happy to be involved. And people can learn more about City of Hope by going to their website at cityofhope.org. Focus for that shout out for a cause for City of Hope and Self for Hope. And we're catching up today with Scott Morrow. Part of the team, Scott, what an incredible event. Tell us a little bit, Scott, about how the Cell for Hope came about and your involvement. Well, we were trying, you know, I've been working with City of Hope on some other events, and we were trying to figure out what would be different. Uh, that's the interesting thing about producing events during, you know, the pandemic, is it doesn't have to be, there's not, the sky's the limit whether it be a wine tasting or a big gala or an award show or a chef demonstration. Uh, bingo, even I, I did a drag queen bingo one day for a charity. So there's all different types of uh, creative directions you can take. And uh, years ago, I had done something for AIDS with a radio station, uh, a three-day marathon where we had celebrity memorabilia and we had different celebrity prizes and it did very well. So actually, City of Hope contacted me to do this because of our relationship, and they knew that I had a, a strong outreach to um, celebrities because of my you know, years in the business. And I enjoyed it from the very first that they talked to me about it. 
I, I love rolling up my sleeves and I got on the phone with all the celebrities and that I know and their managers. And I just sort of hit the neighborhood, if you know what I mean. Right. So when I was able to, I mean, it was a team and the people I was able to go to was from Broadway, from movies, from music to sports. Um, and then, you know, once we started gathering the materials, it was like, okay, who can we get to host? How do we film? And then I put together a special, you know, and I, I approach it as a TV special. So I always care about pacing and I don't, cause I don't want to, I don't want to bore the viewer because sometimes I think these virtual events go too long, but my motto is short and sweet, you know, because we all are distracted and we have so many things on our minds and uh, I want to be respectful of people's time. It, it, it's such a great, fresh outlook. And it reminded me, and I mentioned this to Riley, which she wouldn't know, but you probably know about. It reminded me when the concept I first heard of it was a reinvention of divine design. Exactly. That was, we did talk about that. Where people would come in during the holidays and do their holiday shopping. And what's so great, I think, Scott, that excites me about, even though we have gone through this age of COVID-19 and we've been doing more from home, I'm looking at this, Scott, that this not only can be a virtual ongoing event for years to go in the virtual world, but it may be a reincarnation of something like divine design that there may be a storefront next year that can be a physical place with the reception and being able to sell items that will give back to City of Hope, which I think is going to be incredible. That's, a, that's a, actually a very good idea. And I, and I do think, you know, because I produce probably 15 or more live events all over the country for not-for-profits, et cetera. I do think, you no, know, when we do come back to gathering in person, I still think there's going to be a, a reduced ticket price for streaming so you can watch it from home. Right. I think it's no what the event, all the different charities that I do. Right. And I think it's brilliant because, as you know, whether it's, $10, $25, $50, and the option for these events to bring in some extra income. And also the most important thing is to create awareness. And maybe someday when their pocketbook's able to afford, they'll actually get to the event and see the difference of being there front and center versus just watching it on a screen, whether it be a small screen or a large screen somewhere. Right. Right, and I've been, actually, I've been, I just went on the site to see, because it's a beautiful site. Uh, it's on GiveSmart, and it really is a beautiful site. And, you know, it, the auction opened last night, it's today, and then it closes tomorrow. And, you know, I think there'll be, you know, for the smart shopper, for the holidays especially, you know, I think it's a, it's a flexible price structure. So I think that that's what's the fun of it, to see, you know, but I, I have to be honest, even after all these years in the business, when I got a signed CD from Taylor Swift or Streisand sent me something or, um, you know, Diana Ross, right. you know, who I, you know, I've worked with, when she sent me this beautiful poster that she autographed and it was one of a, a select series, even I got excited, which was very funny at this stage in my career to be this uh, motivated and excited. Oh, I'm sure. And then there's an exciting item, too, with the Lone Ranger item as well. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I know. Um, it, 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 it's a good mix of old and new, because we have stuff from Disney stars, and then we have, you know, stuff from contemporaries, like the Billie Eilish ukulele right. that was donated. Now, that's a huge score, you oh, know, for the now, did you, did you obtain that one as well? I, I didn't get that one. Um, uh, Judy Levy, our event uh, coordinator, had a contact on that. And that was what was so good. It was a true team effort. We all had our specialties, and we divided and conquered. But the, and then what you mentioned, um, the, there's a bullet from the Lone Ranger from the, you know, the TV series donated. But we also have some stuff from Rosalind Russell and Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Elizabeth Taylor. So it's like old Hollywood, new Hollywood, and the Hollywood of tomorrow. Also exciting about that, I think, Scott, is the mere fact that we're 
helping introduce Riley's generation is being introduced to the philanthropic world to help perpetuate the better good in the world. And being that cancer is such a big topic in the world today, and also City of Hope, also dealing with COVID-19, I just think it is very, very important that we create that awareness. And I love that someone like Riley's taking the initiative to take it to her generation. Again, the future of Hollywood. Yeah, um, Riley and Izzy, and they had, a, um, was her co-chair, and they had a whole, like, board of young people, and I, I know Riley said to me once, which was really profound, she said, it felt good to be part of something bigger than she. Right. And I thought that someone who's, um, I want to say she's a junior in high school, but I could be wrong, but for someone of that, um, at that time in her life, I thought that was a very sophisticated and a, a really attractive quality to have. Very true. And of course, Eric Hall Post, what's really interesting about that, it goes back to divine design because the Will and Grace cast, the Will and Grace cast helped be a part of divine design as well. So I thought that was very serendipitous as well when I heard about <laughs> the concept. That's a, you know, um, Eric and I have worked together and, uh, we become friendly and, uh, you know, in the same way that I straddle TV and Broadway, so does he. So, uh, and he's a big, you know, he's a big fan of Beetlejuice and Tootsie, which I have on Broadway. Nice. So, and he's, you know, he's a great, he's a doll. That's all you can say. He's a really nice guy and his whole, his whole team is terrific. And, you know, he's just so good. He's just so good. He knows how to, he's just great. He's a great talent. And we'll let Eric uh, describe what he donated, one of the picks of his favorites, obviously. And the piece de resistance, we actually have an autographed script from the cast of Will and Grace. Don't ask, I just, uh, I know a guy who knows a guy. Also right. having John Schneider uh, part of this event. Right. Now, we haven't seen John in so long. This is a great time to see John. Famous for driving hard and driving fast. Well, tonight, we are driving hard to help the great people at City of Hope. And you got to move fast if you want to get some of these one-of-a-kind celebrity memorabilia items. Course, you know, Dukes of Hazzard was a huge hit, but then he did Broadway with Chicago. But I worked with him back in the early 80s on Night of 100 Stars at Radio City, which was a TV special. Um, no place of the nation, the Radio City Music Hall, for the centennial celebration of the Actors Fund of America, the night of 100 stars. begin the questioning with you, Michelle. Okay, are you young and attractive, macho, sexy, and free? That's well, not the way we play our little game, Michelle. Oh, well, you play your little game and leave the guests to me. Let me ask you, are you bigger than a bread box? Uh, yes. Is there some kind of service you perform? Oh, yes. Can we use the kind of service you're performing? Uh-huh. I don't know about the rest of you. But I am getting warm. I don't remember the network. It was either NBC or ABC. So that's what's really great about our business, especially when you work in uh, philanthropy, is you, you get to work with people again who you, you know, you, you come around. Everybody uh, reconnects. Right. That's the best word. You just reconnect whether it be a Carol Burnett who gave us her autobiography autograph, Diane Keaton, the same thing. You know, I've worked with these people so you can reach out. And, you know, a, a, a funny side story is a lot of that stuff was sent to me personally to hold on to. So we have what's called, City of Hope calls it Scott's Magic Closet. <laughs> and, on week, and, and on weekends when my son comes over to when we watch football together he goes in the closet to see what we have we, oh, we, we got it. a we got a poster from the 40 year old virgin from judd apatow the director that was signed by everyone steve carell jane lynch 
And I mean, that when I got that in, he thought I was, you know, that was a that was a major coup in his a major score for you. And we're not talking about the football game. We're talking about the score of the gift. <laughs> right. And the Lakers jersey. Getting a jersey after the Lakers won the championship. That was pretty cool too. That is. And then of course there's something also from Diane Warren. And people better latch on to that one oh. because she may be nominated for three Oscars I this know. year for best song. I mean and she's just an incredible force. So this may be a collectible that somebody may not be able to touch in the future because right. Diane's real estate just keeps going up there, Scott. Yeah, that's right. I mean, actually, there's, I, I noticed there was some bidding uh, on that one today already. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. To learn more about the City of Hope and their City of Hope Self for Hope auction, go to self, the number four, hope.giftsmart.com. And of course, to learn more about all that City of Hope does, go to cityofhope.org. Until next time, this is BJ Course. You're watching Shout Out for a Cause at Home Edition. If you like the video, hit the like button and just subscribe.